Cool. I guess uh, we can start then. So my name is uh, Stanislav Kelberg, and I work for a company Digital Digitalis IO. Um, we do a lot of Cassandra managed services, and we do a lot of DevOps automation to deliver those services. And today I will be sharing some of our automation goodies uh, for um, Cassandra. So what is this? Um, this is a little but elegant and um, fully controllable uh, Cassandra cluster, uh, which is deployed into containers. Uh, it is used for um, mainly uh, local testing and playing around. Uh, you can say it is an alternative approach to um, a CCM. Um, if you worked with Cassandra before, you're probably familiar with this tool. Uh, so it stands for Cassandra Cluster Manager. It's a tool that's been available for a long time now, uh, and it's written in Python. Uh, but it has a few dependencies, and if you want to run a multi-node cluster, you need to set up a few um, interfaces and, and, and do a little bit of exercise, right? And I think in the modern age uh, with uh, Docker containers and environment around that and Kubernetes and great environment around that, uh, you, you can take uh, a different approach, a little bit more modern uh, to the current age. Right, so yeah. So this is for like quick and easy way and very important reproducible way uh, to uh, spin up a Cassandra cluster, but still have all the flexibility uh, you want uh, in a test environment, all right? So there won't be any magic that abstracts you away from actually doing what you want. Uh, obviously, uh, this is not for production, uh, however, saying that um, you can totally run Cassandra in containers in production uh, by using like Kubernetes as a scheduler or other schedulers as well. Uh, it's definitely being done and, and it's uh, already possible. Uh, but it is um, out of scope uh, for this uh, presentation uh, because we just simply don't have time for this. So we're just gonna focus on uh, a little environment just uh, to test your stuff. All right, so we're gonna base on the official Docker image, uh, which is quite important. Uh, so if you ever worked uh, with um, Docker Hub uh, before, right, um, uh, you probably seen uh, that there are like official and unofficial images, right? And yeah, uh, non-official is just, uh, added by random guys and gals, and you don't really know whether you can trust them or not. Official images are trusted, and very importantly, they are maintained, so you don't have to maintain your own image. You don't have to spend time on this, and every time uh, a new Cassandra release comes out, official image uh, would be updated as well. And also, it is security scanned, uh, which is quite important as well, right? Uh, to orchestrate uh, the Cassandra containers and everything needed for that, uh, we will use Docker Compose. Uh, we could have used uh, Kubernetes as well. Uh, you ac actually can use Kubernetes for local orchestration as well. Uh, for example, Minikube is a very popular tool. Uh, but I did try that uh, approach and uh, Kubernetes configs are way more verbose. Um, and uh, a bit more complex. So Kubernetes is a very advanced tool uh, with much more capabilities, but it's uh, basically an overkill uh, for this purpose. Also, e if you would run Minikube, uh, you would have to run all the control plane components on your local machine, uh, which is uh, quite a performance overhead as well. So we're gonna uh, stick with Docker Compose, uh, which is really straightforward and it looks uh, really elegant. And um, out of all uh, options, I guess this is the best fit uh, for uh, for this uh, approach. 
All right, so we won't need to build or maintain our own image. You don't need to change the official image. Um, you actually don't need to rebuild any images at all. So uh, during this uh, presentation, no Docker files will be affected at all or harmed in any way. Uh, but uh, we still have all the flexibility to configure basically anything, like anything uh, you need. Uh, how? Uh, so we're gonna use a little hack, right? So it's it's quite easy, really. So basically, we're gonna copy all the config files out of the Cassandra Docker image and attach those back uh, as a volume uh, for, for each uh, Cassandra container and mount it back to exactly the same location um, as the original files were. Uh, and this approach works. It actually overrides original files and, and you just can control it from there. Um, before we uh, start cracking on, uh, just to mention the dependencies, obviously it's uh, Docker and Docker Compose, and you need to have uh, some uh, free RAM available on, on your uh, machine. Uh, basically uh, two gigabytes per, per node. Um, you can actually run it with a little bit less. I did, I did run it with less, uh, but um, if you actually plan um, to use this cluster for something, do some tests, uh, you, you better to have at least two gigabytes uh, per node just to make sure it doesn't crash out of memory every now and then. Okay, so uh, let's start. Uh, I guess I need to exit uh, to uh, copy uh, the commands. So first of all, uh, what we're going to do is uh, pull uh, the latest stable uh, Cassandra image uh, from uh, Docker Hub. But before I do this, I'll just quickly take a look at chat uh, just to double check there's no issues. All right, uh, cool. Uh, by the way, I need to mention that with Docker Compose, you don't really need uh, to pull the image. Uh, it does it for you. But since we're gonna uh, need to do this little hack that I described before, uh, yeah, we would need to pull the image before we even uh, trigger the Docker Compose, right? So this is a step one. Right, in my machine, it's really easy because I already have this uh, image pulled in, right? So it, it might take a little bit time uh, on your side. So now we're gonna run uh, these three commands. I'm just gonna trigger them and explain what they do, right? So basically this is a Docker run, which will run a, a container uh, based on the image that we just downloaded. it, And it is a disposable container. Um, minus RAM uh, means that as soon as the container is stopped, it's just going to be removed. And we only started for a little while, so we can uh, copy uh, the configuration files uh, to our uh, host system uh, from this container, right? Uh, as of now, I don't think there is a way to copy uh, the files directly from image. So the most, the easiest way uh, is just to quickly start the container, get the config and and end it. So here we have it. So it's just, yeah, uh, a directory with all the Cassandra configs that you probably uh, might have seen before um, if you use Cassandra. Right, those are vanilla configs, right? So those are not changed and, and we are gonna name them uh, like this uh, for now. And obviously those configs are specific to this uh, version. So, so we uh, specify the version as well. Right, so uh, now let's look at the Docker Compose file. So this is the actual meat um, uh, of what we're gonna do. Um, uh, right. I guess, let me zoom in a little. All right. Um, so it's pretty easy, actually. There is not uh, too much going on, right? So I'm just gonna uh, make a few comments um, just to explain how it works before we actually apply it, right? So first of all, uh, we create a Docker network called Cassandra. This is where we will put all our uh, Cassandra nodes. And then we just create nodes one by one. Uh, so I can't fit as uh, the Docker Compose in in one slide, so there are gonna be two slides. This is um, just the first one uh, defined here, right? Um, and it's, if you use the Compose before, right, there's nothing uh, that you haven't seen before, right? So you specify the image, a container name, host name, the network it's going to be attached to. And we're also gonna uh, map the port uh, to the host system. 
Um, you don't really have to do this, uh, but um, we just gonna, gonna map it for um, ease of use. So you can access the SQL port uh, and run queries uh, directly from your host system on this port. Alternatively, uh, you can add your application container into this network as well and, 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 and speak inside the Docker network. Right, I guess the most important part is the volumes, right? So in this case, we have two. Uh, first one is for data. And um, yeah, by the way, uh, I should say that uh, the volume part on the right is, is the path where it's mounted to inside the container, right? And volume uh, path on the left is a directory on your host system. Right, so this directory is not created yet, and if it's not created, uh, Docker will create it automatically and and put all the data here, which will persist across cluster reboots and cluster destroys uh, whatever. Right, so now is the configuration volume. This is a bit more interesting because we actually going to pre-create uh, uh, this directory, and in this case, Docker will behave uh, differently, and it will map all these configs uh, to this path. Even so, this path already exists um, inside the image. It will actually override those, right? So this is important to understand uh, it just uh, to get the idea how, how it all works. Um, and that's it really, right? And also we specify a couple of environment variables. Uh, so those environment variables actually um, come from the official image documentation, right? So this is how you do some basic uh, configuration. And you have to provide them in any case, even if you provide the uh, configuration files, because those uh, would override the default values to whatever is default in the attached configuration, right? So I'm just gonna quickly exit and go to the uh, Docker Hub Cassandra official image uh, where you can see uh, all the documentation for, for those um, environment variables. Um, there's not many, right? You can only uh, do uh, the basic uh, stuff with them. All the advanced stuff uh, you would have to uh, do yourself, right? Uh, so you, you can still uh, have control of everything. Right, so let's go next. And this is a definition of the other two nodes. It is smaller, right? So I guess uh, I will just go back uh, right to the environment. So it is using the environment variables that were already uh, set uh, for the first node. It's just gonna inherit it from there. Uh, so the only difference uh, from the first node, apart from the that node name is different and passes are different, is that the second node depends on the first node for startup. Right, so in Cassandra, you don't really start all the nodes uh, right away. You start them one by one. By the way, uh, yeah, I need to mention that uh, I nominated uh, the first node and second node as seeds in Cassandra, and they should be started first. And I've also changed the cluster name something else to something else uh, from default. And, and I don't use the default uh, snitch, uh, which is a simple snitch, and I use Gossip property file uh, snitch uh, instead, right? And I also reduced uh, a number of tokens from default, just because I can, just, just to demonstrate uh, what you can do with environment variables. All right, and, and the third node is the same, but this is the third node uh, depends on on the second node, obviously. So those uh, three nodes just going to start in sequence, uh, one, two, three. Okay, uh, so this is an image and I actually cannot copy paste this uh, to um, my environment. So I have this already prepared. Oh, by the way, there is a um, GitHub repo that I created where uh, all the code is available. So I'm gonna give you uh, the location of this. So uh, you just can copy it as well really easily. So yeah, if you take a look at it, it's just uh, the same uh, Docker file uh, already available. Right, so let's go further. Okay, I'm gonna exit again uh, to copy new commands. So what we're going to do now, we are going to copy um, vanilla config into the separate config for each node, right? So each node uh, would have its own config that uh, we can uh, maintain. 
right? And you can see this in here. Right, said so that each node would have its own config, right? So from now on, we have the power to to change anything we want. All right, uh, so let's start, right? To start up the cluster, you just need to run uh, Docker Compose up. Uh, and I add minus D. Minus D means run it in a daemon mode, right? So I still have my prompt returned to me uh, when I run this. Uh, right, uh, then uh, we can run Docker PS. I see that those containers did start, right? And you can see them with the names CAS1, CAS2, and, and CAS3, right? So now let's, um, let's run some commands. By the way, this is how you run commands. Uh, with Docker containers, if you haven't uh, used those before, right? So you do docker exec, and then the name of the container, and then you just run the command uh, you want to run, right? So in my case, I just going to run Cassandra's node tool status, right? So that, just to note, that command runs inside the container, right? So cluster is almost there, right? So almost all three nodes are there. The last one is joining, right? So you're getting there, okay. Again, it's not completed, but we can already run some uh, SQL SH against uh, the first node. All right, so this uh, returns uh, system uh, key spaces. Uh, by the way, uh, you can run SQL SH interactively as well, right? Uh, you just need to add minus IT to the Docker exec. Uh, I means interactive and T means uh, to have um, a real terminal. Uh, it is Y, right? So let's run it. And now we connect it to our uh, Cassandra with our um, uh, cluster name and we can run some queries from here. Um, what I want to do, I actually want to create some data, which is not just uh, the system key spaces, uh, because we will be destroying our cluster and I just want to show that the data uh, persists across uh, different uh, works that you do. So, right, so this SQL code is not on the slides, uh, but you can insert to the cluster basically anything you want. You just can run um, your own. Uh, this one just inserts some email contacts. Um, in this case, both are mine contacts. By the way, it's also real. So if you feel like writing me a letter, uh, you can. Right. So let's go next. Oh, um, by the way, let's. So we did it on, on the first node. Let's actually query the same data from the uh, third node. So making sure that uh, class is operation fine and you can um, return the data from, from all the nodes uh, in the cluster. So in this case, I pick class three, which is the last node. And I get the same data. All right, uh, so uh, now let's change some config as an example, um, just to see that uh, what we can do with the cluster. So um, for this presentation, I will change uh, the authentication settings. So by default, uh, Cassandra doesn't require any authentication with SQL SH, right? So you can see that we can run queries without doing any authentication at all, right? In order to enable it, um, you need to change the Cassandra YAML config, right? And you need to change the authenticator and you need to change the authorizer, right? And you need to do it for every node, right? So basically, we need to update the conf Cassandra YAML for CAS1, CAS2, and CAS3. I have a little script that just does it to save time. Right, and we can verify it for like, let's say second node, just to see that it did work. Yeah, it did work. So now it's a password authenticator and Cassandra authorizer. Right, so um, that's it really, right? So we have our configuration updated and in order to apply, we just do Docker Compose restart and this I'm going to restart our cluster. 
all three nodes, right? And let's see what node will say to say. Right, it's still setting up. It takes some time for Cassandra. All right, so the cluster is up and let's run the query again. Oops, it doesn't work anymore, um, but this is expected and because we just enabled authentication. So in Cassandra, when you enable authentication, the default uh, username and password is Cassandra Cassandra, which we're going to use. Well, unless you, you change it uh, from default, right? And now we can see that authentication is working. Right, so this example shows what we can do and you can do like, Anything, anything you want, right? So all those configs, right? You you can change uh, GVM options, you can change the startup script, you can change uh, Cassandra YAML. Um, so you have full control of everything. Um, you can even do more complicated stuff. Uh, so for example, you can test a major cluster upgrade uh, in this environment, or you can set up encryption both node to node and client to node, right? So for example, if you wanted to say, uh, test encryption uh, in this cluster and test your clients with encryption uh, in, in the local environment, uh, all you need to do, obviously you need to generate key stores and trust stores for every node, right? So you need to do this yourself. And then you just put this on the same volume where you have the configuration files attached. And then you just change those configuration files to use those key stores and trust stores and yeah, here you go, you would have your authentication uh, working like it was a real a production cluster. So you can test a lot of production-like features uh, on, on your laptop, like uh, without any limits, right? So um, yeah, so here we go. Uh, we have a great cluster, uh, very flexible and uh, you can, uh, and you should uh, put uh, all those configs uh, into your version control. Right, uh, so yeah, uh, it's reproducible and it's not lost. Uh, also, uh, you can manage, so those are, those configs are just the files on, on your host file system, right? So you can manage them with something else if you want. You can manage them with your configuration management, for example, Ansible or, or whatever, whatever else uh, that you use. Um, okay, yeah, and yeah, I need to say that you can also use some of the Docker goodies uh, that are available. So for example, resource limiting or health checks. I didn't add uh, neither of those uh, uh, into the uh, Docker Compose in here, YAML, uh, because it just wouldn't fit on, on the screen. Uh, but you can and you should uh, use resource limits and health check and you can double check the Docker Compose documentation to do this, right? So this will make your cluster a little bit safer and nicer. Uh, also, you can do stuff like you can post your entire cluster when you don't need to use it. Yeah, by the way, let's actually do this, right? I'm not sure um, I have enough going on to really show you how it works, but Let's try. So at the moment, I have, uh, uh, not sure. Yeah, I have very little CPU used, like half percent. And I have like 99.5 uh, idle, right? Um, because the class center doesn't really do much at the moment, right? But still, right, You it uses almost up to 1%. So let's see what happens when we put the class on pause, right? So. Uh, first, let's just check the current status of the cluster. The cluster is working and what we can do, we can do docker compose pause, right? And that's it, it paused like immediately, right? All, all nodes are frozen and you wouldn't be able to run any commands anymore, right? So that happens immediately. Let's like let's look at the top again, all right. You can now actually see this already better. We never really had 99, 99 or 100% idle, right? So now it's officially doing nothing, right? So basically we just frozen our cluster immediately. And it's sometimes useful uh, when you have a big cluster and you have application and you have a lot of testing going on and it 
and your laptop is really melting and somebody gives you a call on Zoom or Skype where you have a conference call and you just need more performance on your laptop. You just pause the cluster and when you're done, you just do unpause. And unpause work works immediately, right? So it is. It doesn't need to start up your cluster from scratch, right? You you just hit on post and you have boom, your all cluster is in frozen all three nodes, and you can work with it as you used to work before. Okay, right. Uh, so and yeah, last but not least, um, is basically just a general approach, right? It. To be honest, it has nothing to do with Cassandra at all, right? So you can run anything like this. You can run it in uh, with uh, Docker Compose. And basically the only trick here is that you attach the configuration files as volumes. So you have this uh, flexibility and also um, it's much more dynamic. If you had your uh, configuration files built into the image, every time you need to change a value, you have to rebuild this image, right? And, and, and you have to, uh, restart the container with an image, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, this uh, attaching configs uh, via volumes give you the flexibility just to test things really, really fast. And that's basically what you want because you don't really, uh, don't want to, to waste time on other stuff uh, when you're testing. Right, so as I said, uh, all the code is available uh, on GitHub, right? So the repo name called Triple uh, C, you can pretty much guess uh, what it stands for. And it's under Digitalis-IO uh, um, organization, right? So I'm just gonna quickly navigate to this repo, right? And so here you have the Docker Compose uh, file example uh, that we used, right? And also all the steps that we did, all the manual steps, uh, we did it manually just uh, to show uh, the approach, but they just put in, in the sim simple script, right? It basically figures out the version automatically from the Docker file and just does all the manual steps uh, that we did, right? So basically you don't need to do anything. You just need to run the setup config file and that's it. From now on, you can uh, start up your cluster and do any testing that, that you want to do. Uh, I guess that's pretty much everything I wanted to show uh, much ahead of time. Uh, well, this just shows how uh, quick and easy this approach is so you can do this really fast and efficiently. Um, I guess it's probably too much time for questions. So we might do something else, might do something more complicated. So how much time do we have, right? So this session, will end at 35 and now it's almost 25. So we have like 10 minutes. All right, why not do a major upgrade of the clusters then? Uh, I think 10 minutes should be enough. So um, what do we have now? Right, so we have the latest 3.11 version and what do we have on the Hub? Right, so we have actually for zero, it's in beta, so probably unstable, but I guess this is not an issue because where else you would test unstable version if not on your uh, local machine. All right, so this is a perfect environment for that. So let's uh, just change this. All right, yeah, so we're actually doing a rolling upgrade, right? So yeah when you're upgrading Cassandra, you need to do it one by one. And also you need to uh, pull the image as well. Right, and let me just quickly copy the hockey stuff we did for our configurations. This one. So what I'm going to do, right? So um, I am going to change the image tag for every container one by one. 
And every time I change something, I run Docker Compose up and it will automatically uh, rebuild um, the container with the changes it needs to apply, right? Uh, since it's, it's Cassandra, we do uh, this exercise one note at a time, right? But since the configuration file will change, we need to, um, we need to get those uh, configuration files up to date, right? So I'm going to pull the, right? So that happened quickly. Now we have a configuration files, uh, vanilla configuration files for Cassandra 4.0 for as well. So uh, since we're going to update the first node, so let's quickly do this and copy all of those configuration files for node number one. The night, let's do sudo. Right, so I guess we're good to do our major upgrade here. Yeah, so we do Docker both up again. And now it's recreating Cassandra 1 because this is the only one that changed and all others are up to date, right? And if we do not pull status, hopefully it will start up. Right, it's starting up. And what I want to do is I want to do gossip info and grab. Right, so you can see that the rolling upgrade already started that two um, out of three nodes are still the old version and, and one of them is new one, right? So uh, basically this approach is working. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, do this uh, for two others. So, uh, oh, I did a restart. Sorry, uh, I need to do up minus D. So, okay, that recreated as a node number two, and let's change the last one right away. Hopefully we're not doing this too quickly. And we need a config for Z node three. Okay, this looks right. And let's do Docker Compose up again. Right, let's do not all status first. So one of the nodes is still down. All right, so now it's all up. All right, so that's it. Now you can see that all the nodes have uh, the latest uh, version running, all right? That basically completes a major upgrade of the cluster. Well, not quite. Uh, if you uh, read Cassandra before, you know that you also need to uh, run upgrade as a stables. Just quickly go to this. All right. Probably not necessary for the demo, but it just, I can show you uh, that you can do like everything here, you can do uh, snapshots, backups, SS stable upgrades, uh, basically whatever you do in production, you can test on, on your local machine really easily. Right, so that did the upgrade and I'm just going to run the query uh, that we used to run. Just to see that our data survived the upgrade and it did survive, right. So, that's it. Uh, we just did uh, a major uh, version uh, upgrade of a three node cluster in five minutes, which I think is not bad. Uh, so I guess now it concludes uh, this uh, presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, it's a good time to ask. Yeah, by the way, while, while you type in your questions, uh, if there are any, so here are my contact details and also, um, 
you can find as a blog post on the same topic, uh, which is a little bit more verbose as is in this presentation. It's a little bit more detailed, right? So you just navigate to digital as a tile slash blog, and you can find uh, this blog post in there and other great blog posts by my colleagues as well. So let's see if there are any questions. Right. Uh, have you found the official Docker images for Cassandra adequate for use with CCC? If not, what types of changes have you made? Yes, I did find uh, the official Docker images adequate, and this is um, yeah, this is the best image I can recommend, right? And it's really up to date. Like uh, I, I've seen that uh, the new version was released on Apache Cassandra, and the same day I I, I used uh, the official Docker image. Uh, so yeah, and you don't really need to change anything at all like at all so this is the uh, nice thing about it so if you if you don't you know fork or don't do any changes don't create your docker file don't reuse it it may, makes it like way way simpler so you always uh rely you know always start from a blank slate or always rely on uh on the official image right so i don't see any more questions. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, um, you can use uh, this approach for other stuff, right? Um, yeah, by the way, uh, if you haven't uh, tried uh, the latest Cassandra 4 yet, I guess you you should, right? Because the... Uh, Our cluster of the upgraded one. Yeah, so the stable version is not far off. Um, so I guess it's a good time to start playing. And this is literally uh, the best way uh, to play with this using Docker Compose and, and uh, attach configuration as volumes. All right, uh, we have two more minutes uh, before this ends. Uh, I don't see any more questions. So yeah, uh, I'm just gonna open my contacts again. Um, I guess those will be provided in some notes uh, by by the organizer. I'm not really sure how it works, but I'm just gonna keep it on, on screen uh, just in case. Yeah, also you can find me on LinkedIn, just uh, search uh, for Stanislav Kelberg. Um, I'm the only one there with such name. So friend me. Right, last minute and I don't see any more questions. All right, I guess uh, we can end it here then. Uh, thanks for attending. I hope it was useful.